Not sure if this is a new episode, but if it is, hi! <laughs> Welcome back! Uh, hopefully the webcam is working. I don't even know if that's going to work for us or not. Um, but if this is part of the previous episode, duh, just uh, ignore this. I am now going to go through and actually try to make my character while like, hopefully speeding through for you guys. But let's see what we can do. Okay, for the next five minutes or so, I actually haven't 100% looked, but uh, we are going to be going through a very speeded up version of the vast majority of my Rook's create character creation. Um, you're going to see me, I think, fluctuate. At one point, I start to kind of maybe lean towards like a pale redhead. Um, I do end up keeping sort of the redhead look, um, and I'll explain why later it's because uh, I was kind of working off an inspiration of a character but I ended up really liking the preset face that I kind of picked out um, and wanted to keep that so I kind of melded the two together but so that's why you're gonna see that be kind of fluctuating around you'll also probably see my camera change a bit like I'm changing sort of some of the like uh, like the scale and like where it's at i'm trying to kind of figure out where the best spot is for it um i think i've got it figured out by the end but yeah this whole video what is it now like 53 ish minutes long was um almost three hours yeah nearly three hours of recording that has been parsed down and shoved into a 53 minute box <laughs> So uh, working very hard. It's like midnight now. Super sick. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's been fun though. I this has been this has been a really fun character creator. So I hope you guys enjoy seeing like some of the sped up stuff. So that you know you kind of see what my thought process was. And uh, this video also includes the Inquisitor, uh, which I do forget about that I have to create. <laughs> and but I didn't. For, I had videos prepped to help me see her face at different angles and stuff from Inquisition from like a couple months ago that I'd taken uh, specifically for this because I knew I'd be recreating her in Velgard. so that's what you're going to see too you're going to see me looking up and down all the time and that one because I'm keeping in my face cam for now for these sped up parts I don't know if that's weird or not I did keep the audio not sped up because uh, so the clicks are a little off but, but it definitely sounded too weird to have like five minutes of like just like sped up audio like sped up music you know so i let just keep the nice music the way it is you know um but in the video where i'm doing my inquisitor like you'll see my face camera i'm looking up and down up and down up and down it's because i'm referencing the video on my phone that shows my inquisitor's face and like her her specs essentially so yeah i think that's all I have for you. The rest of it will be uh, just some chill vibes, chill the music.
At this rate, I am not sure. Sorry, I can't, I can't help but look at myself over way over there. Uh, at this rate, I am not sure I'm going to get this video out on release day, which is upsetting. Uh, and I'm dying. I have a headache. <laughs> I've made some. I stopped recording for a second, and I made some slight changes. I toned down the tattoo color, the the brightest color one, um, and then I freaking it was. I prefer generally what do you what it where is it at on undergarments? I generally prefer like a shirt and shorts. You know, like that's just that's just what I think would be most make the most sense because this just looks kind of dumb. But like to me, but like once I put it on her briefly for a second, so I could show off to my sister that I got all the you know the paint that I did and stuff, I was like, actually this looks so much better because this one does something weird to her armpits and I think it's just the way that this is cut here. It's like, it's like bowing out even though her skin or like body doesn't go out that far. Like, I don't know how to say it, but like, anyway, I'm not sponsored, but I do love Dr. Pepper uh, co Creamy Coconut. It's the, so good and I have a headache, so that's why I'm drinking it. <laughs> but, um, mm -hmm -hmm. it looks much better. Somehow it looks much better. Oh. Hopefully, haha, my webcam might be freaking out. Um, yeah, it looks much better. Anyway, I'm distracted with all the things popping up. But yeah, I'm really loving... I just love everything. I love I love the whole... She's come together really, really well. Oh, let's see. Let's check the different lighting. This is probably going to be most of the game lighting, honestly. Is this, like, purpley color? And she looks quite different. Actually, she looks a little more rugged. <laughs> it's the lighting issue where I'm like, and this is, I guess this is the one that makes her look the fuzziest, so I'm kind of like, ooh, dang, this one looks a little sharper, which I do like, I think I am. Okay, and quick, oh, I guess, like, quick explanation for what I've got so far, I'm trying not to touch my face, um, Falandin Valisleen. Uh, I looked it up to make sure, uh, at least according to Inquisition, this is the Falandin Friend of the Dead Phallusleen. And in my head, because I'm planning at this point now to do more watch as the background, as the faction. Um, in my head, as a child, she's kind of, I guess, I don't mean I'm not a child, like as a young adult maybe, she uh, is kind of at the point of my life where I'm at now, right? Where like death is not a thing to be feared. I've been an archaeologist for 10 years, like that whole like cycle thing that I if I kept it in of like you know the life and death cycle thing I think she's been attuned to that since she was young and so they she was assigned or chose the Falandin uh friend of the dead you know of the cycle of life essentially um Valisleen. um and I, I attempted to make it as purple as possible because again I actually don't know if I've mentioned this part yet but i i kind of gave her an alana the lioness is one of, is my one of my favorite characters of all time from my favorite author of all time tomorrow pierce um and so i've kind of inspired her off of alana with the red hair it's curly uh the side shave though is something that i prefer and a purple eyes is best i could get um and, and she's short and stocky. Usually I make like, when I when given the chance, which has only been very recently, in Baldur's Gate 3 I made a very tall, beefy drow woman because I was finding like tall, beefy, drow, like elf woman. Like, heck yes, like finally. Um, but I did decide on her to make her very short because Alana the Lioness is very short and she's like a young girl who disguises herself as a boy to become a knight. And so it was a book that I loved. I read so much as a kid. Those books are so worn out at this point love them um so yeah i've kind of inspired her off of that and like um there's like the i don't know i just i like this like she doesn't necessarily like, like not the same like alana's pretty white <laughs> i think canonically but like i didn't want to just make another white character i don't know i just wanted to make some like i liked i was drawn to this like sort of face set i guess um, initially, so I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna make her look like this, but be inspired by Alana, you know? So, because this character, the early preset was the one I thought looked the best. Um, so, and then I messed with it. I have done, once again, my best. I couldn't do it as well in this one as you could in Inquisition, but I've tried to make the forehead and the nose as straight as possible, right? With that whole thing that I had from, that's technically a Dragon Age 2 design, but that I did in Inquisition without knowing. Um, and I'm just really loving it. I love the long ears. Oh, it's so good. Um, and so she, that's why we have the Fallen Din and why I have the color, like, you know, the red hair and purple eyes thing going. 
Um, and then the tattoos I chose are, I can't remember, uh, there's not like a specific name for the set, but I chose this one kind of for like the skull shape on, on the arm. Um, and like, to me, like these would just be like maybe stories of her life because I've decided that she thinks of her body as a tapestry because honestly paint, body paint and body tattoos is probably a little bit too much, but like, I'm so excited to have that option now. So like, I want to use them. Um, I did tone down the paint, um, so that I think that does look much better. Um, but yeah, so I've decided that she sees her body as a tapestry, and so these are potentially associated with like Mourn Watch in some way, like the tattoos are. Um, and then, uh, and they're not the same. It's not the same as Valisling. Valisling is a blood tattoo, right? Like it's an extremely painful, like magically infused blood tattoo. Um, so this is like floating. I don't know why this is like you can't see it, but it's like floating over to me. Um, uh, maybe you can, I don't know, but it's like right in there. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so, so like, but I don't see her as being like, you know, like, oh, the, the body is a temple or like, you know, like, because I have this on here, I can't put anything else on here. I think she sees it more as like, body is a tapestry, tells a story of my life, you know? Um, so Morn Watch, like her experiences with Morn Watches are regularly tattooed onto her. And then the paint, though, is the one that reminded me of a Ahala. Um, I'm not going to show it all the way because I don't want to have to edit it and worry about demonetization or whatever. But, like, uh, it kind of has, like, like the, almost like a deer face in the, at the sternum, right? And then, like, the hollow horns coming out. Um, and this is the one called Dalish Autumn, but I really like it because it goes a very autumnal vibe with her red hair. So, like, I was like, yes, I love this. And so to me, again, that tattoo, this, not the tattoo, the body paint is just sort of another reminder. It's like, this is where I came from. This is who I am. The Mourn Watch, my Dalish, an Dalish ancestry, my, the, who I am as a Dalish person, like, right now, you know, like, this all melts together as into who she is as a person. And I am not going to lie to you guys. I had a hard time with the waist-to-hips ratio stuff. Like, I was like trying to make her short and stocky, you know? And I am so pleased. Like, I am looking at her waist, and I am like, oh, ooh, I did a good job. <laughs> so I'm very, very pleased. I think she looks so good. I'm actually so excited. Um, I think... Ooh, we even have, like, the arrow, sort of like Andrew's way, like the path, was it the, the path of the arrow or something? Path, something like that. There's, like, the path of the tree. Um... This is spooky, probably like, you know, whatever it is, the in-between in Alluvians area. This is like a, oh no, that's like, maybe like Minrathis, I don't know. And that's like a spooky town, I don't know. Okay, I think, and I gave her a little scar, you know, why not? You gotta have a little one on the face. Um, I am so pleased. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy <laughs> Scare me, I was like, oh no. Okay, we have <laughs> I've spent so long where <laughs> we're in lineage and appearance. Oh my goodness. It's it's good. It's good. We're gonna we're gonna Ha ah, I scared me. <laughs> again, like we keep having issues with the body models all again. That might be because I'm playing on Ultra though and it doesn't want me to. Uh, I'm definitely playing oh so we got mage and rogue. No, we're playing a warrior. Um Ooh, explore. Okay. Mmm. I played a, a reaver in Inquisition with my main Inquisitor. Um, and I enjoyed that a lot. But it looks like Reaper, uh, like that, that's probably a Slayer. Um, oh, they're just going through and showing the videos. Wow, what was that? Uh, but Reaper sounds like, since I'm thinking I'm leaning towards Morn Watch. Oh my gosh, the like necromancy effects? Oh, that's cool. That is cool. We're gonna be a warrior for sure. Okay, my backstory. All right, let's look at all the backstories. Unfortunately, I was watching somebody's video a couple months ago who was doing all of these. Uh, backstories, and I will tell you, one of them has a massive story spoiler in it. So, a little weird. I think it's the Lords of Fortune. Be aware. I'll try to put up a thing, maybe, that says spoiler on the screen when it pops up. 
But so this would be if we were a Grey Warden. Garuk is a Grey Warden, an ancient military order sworn to battle dark spawn and other monsters. The Wardens undergo secret, unbreakable rights that grant them supernatural powers against the dark. Also, the cloak left because it's so hot in here with all my equipment running. Um, bonded in blood, you gain your patience with the Grey Wardens more quickly. You get extra damage versus dark spawn, and hot base defense and health are slightly increased. Very nice. I do love the tarot cards that we're doing again. The Veil Jumper's armor sucks. Let's just get <laughs> this. Sucks. <laughs> oh, it was like cool for a second, but now I'm like, you look like, you look like, uh, who's it, the dead space guy? Look like we're about to like jump onto a spaceship. Rick is a veil jumper that's daring. It doesn't suck. It's just kind of not what I expected. Its daring group explores ancient elven ruins and Arlathan forests. Okay, just, yeah. Although founded by elves, they welcome anyone brave enough to face Arlathan's reality warping magic. See, yeah, this is the thing. I went off on it earlier, and hopefully that was like not the wrong time to do it. But, like, I'm a little concerned. It was founded by ancient elves, or by elves, so that's good. But, again, my friend said, I should point it out, it's like they're the Dalish elves on, like, steroids, right? Where, like, the Dalish just kind of pick through what's left of their ancient society to try to find remnants and shards of, of their history, which is why their history is so fascinating, because it's just like archaeology, where you're only finding, like, bits and pieces of, of the story, right? You need to try to make this whole picture with, like, less than half the story. You know what I mean? Um, most organic things have decayed, you know, and that was the vast majority of what, like, they ate, like, plant material, like, used, like, baskets, like, not for everyone. It just depends on the time period. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's, or, like, weavings and stuff, like, 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 uh, cloth, like, a lot of that decays, you know? Sometimes in burials you can get, like, these juniper, um, juniper bark mats, you know? But, like, and in other places, you can obviously get different things. I think when I talk about archaeology, usually I'm spe specifying the Southwest North America or like West North America, because uh, that's what I'm familiar with. That's what I work at. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm iffy on. And what was it? There was like a. Asper oh. Oh, is this because I what? Hang on. Oh, okay, so you're starting out. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, the gray... So it depends, like, the casual wear. So, okay, well, we have to pick based on our casual wear now. But it looks like the starting outfit is the same no matter what. Their casual outfit on the veil jumper is very nice. I like, I love the... Like, it's like, veil jumper. I'm like, okay, we get it. I know it's like a... That, that design is like throughout the game, right? Like, we see these, like, you know, these triangular lines. It's definitely, like, a design feature, but it is kind of funny. Um, there was something in the... the backstory of the Veil Jumper, though, where it's like, if you if you choose a Veil Jumper... I'll try to briefly summarize it, because uh, I don't really know where I would see that. Okay, they may have changed this from when I saw it, like, a couple months ago on, on a, like, a video that somebody had who had a little bit of early access, you know? Um, but as far as I remember, the Veil Jumper's story was that, like, you went in with a squad to, like, get this map. And, like, a really, really important map that had, like, something that I think the Venatori wanted or something. And, um, you... You get it, you're successful in acquiring it ahead of them, and then you start to escape, but your friends get caught. And so you go back in order to save them, but in doing so, you either, like, lose it, or it's destroyed, or it's taken by the Venatori, but you do manage to save your friends. And I'm like, all of the background stories associated with each faction had something like that, where it's like, you went back and tried to save your friends, or do something good, so now you're, um... You know, you had to lay low or something. And I'm just like, that's kind of shoehorning us into being a goody-goody two-shoes. And I generally play a goody-goody two-shoes, so, like, no hate. But, like, I feel like it's it's nice to have, like, a background character who... Like, the background being open, right, where you can be, a, like, a lovable bastard. Or, like, which one of my friends likes to play. Or, like, just a total dick. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm kind of worried on, like, the breadth and depth of, like, dialogue they're going to give us if they're going to shoehorn us into being a good person. You know what I mean? Like, it's not really an RPG if you shoehorned me into being a good person. But, um... Yeah, so anyway, like, I figured, okay, so if you're a Veil Jumper, and you're, like, you know, going through, like, you've all signed up for this, and, like, you're doing something really, really important, honestly, like, trying to, like, discover and, like, protect ancient relics, like, magical relics, you know, um, and you abandon that mission just to go save your friends, like, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, you saved us, but, like, you've, 
you've like totally undermined everything the organization is about by being a goody two shoes and like I don't know I think personally I would be like you know like I would try to like hide or, or take the item that I have like to a safe spot as quickly as I can and then go back you know or trust that my friends can get out you know that, that they because they were like a fighting and it's like I trust my friends that they can actually like you know take care of themselves you know and if not like that's really tragic but like that's a cool that's a, also an interesting background to have like a tragic background where it's like in mass effect right they let you choose between being like a war hero which i did pick or being like the sole survivor like someone who will survive and get the job done no matter what so like and i just finished my mass effect like legendary run so i'm like that's kind of on the brain so anyway gamer vision increased damage versus the fade touch that's interesting hmm Keen eye, the shadow dragons, that's right. Oh, very monk looking. Why are they all? I don't know, maybe it's just my body shape doesn't look really great in them. I don't know. Rook is a shadow dragon. The underground resistance opposes corrupt rulers of slavery into Vinter. Coming from all walks of life, they're determined to bring justice to the people. I do like the colors and I like I like the the design, honestly. Um Increased damage versus an Atori. Your class-specific resource regenerates slightly faster. My class-specific... So, like, stamina, maybe? Lords of Fortune. What a nice car. Whoa! Okay, this armor is so nice! What is the... the I want to pick them just because their armor and their casual wear is the best. Holy cow. And it's an informal collection of explorers, hundreds, and treasure, tre treasure seekers from Ravain. The Rowdy Lords are famed for both daring exploits and narrow escapes. You deal increased damage versus mercenaries. You perform takedowns on enemies with slightly less effort. Um, <laughs> they make a good argument, a.k.a. this. Uh, except for the fact that it's, um, they're like, it's explorers is cool, right? But treasure seekers, to me, again, it's like looting artifacts. And, like, I just fundamentally, like, most games have some sort of, like, oh, pick up this thing. And you can sell it, and it's like a priceless relic of some sort. And you're like, ah, you know? But, like, that's just me. The Morn Watch. Wow. What is it? Like, like the fair degree on the armor makes it look like it's, like, a, like a bronze armor. I mean, it's not sexy, but it's cool. What is that? Okay, plain. <laughs> Serviceable. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. The elite necromantic order explores the mysteries of life and death and tends to the undead and Navarre's sprawling grand necropolis. I honestly thought I would, because of my profession and, like, my lifestyle, like, I thought I would gravitate towards the veil jumpers a lot. But I think the Morn Watch is actually, like, subtly, like, a better pick for me as an archaeologist, especially one who, like, appreciates that. Like, like not all archaeologists are, like, like we, many of us are, at least in the, in the, Pacific, not the Pacific, the Southwest and, like, the West are aware of many tribal, like, not tribal, uh, native beliefs that involve the, like, cyclical nature of, like, you know, living and dying in, in the area and, like, the spirit of a place being, you know, there, like, you are, like, whatever is in that, whatever grows or is raised or whatever in that area is a part of the spirit of the area and, like, comes back and forth. I don't know. Anyway, like, I'm not saying it very well, but, like, um, anyway, I just feel like at this point in my life, this is probably this faction is is actually more on the lines of like where i'm at in my career and in my personal philosophy you know hmm you yeah. tends to the undead and of our sprawling grand necropolis you deal increased damage versus undead and demons and demons too that's handy you can apply additional affliction stack on targets all right ingelver is my surname <laughs> The Acadian Demon Crows and the Lords of Fortune have the best armor! Or maybe this is just like the elven version? Because I think my friend posted a picture of himself with his setup as a Lord of Fortune and it did not look like that with a dwarf, like all shiny. At least I don't think it did. Swift knives in the dark, the crows are ruthless assassins, both respected and feared and TV shadowy protectors. Listen, I... The crows are cool and I would not mind being part of the crows. Um, but... Being a warrior and part of the crows is a little odd. I could see a mage, and I could see a rogue, but a warrior is like, I don't know. But the armor looks so sick. What's the casual wear look like? Look, look at this nice V-neck. It looks so nice. 
Again, I hope I'm recording. I would scream if I wasn't, honestly. Like, I would die a little bit inside. Um, is there audio? Okay, there is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cry. Um, anyway, I want to screenshot all of these because they look really nice and I'm sad. The Lords of Fortune, if I had to pick just based on appearances, Antifa and Crows of, and Lords of Fortune are the best. Oh my gosh. No, I can't. I can't. I'm going to be a more. I'm going to be more and watch. Okay, continue. Oh, okay. Okay, here it is. Here it is. The, like, actual backstory, I think, for you. Defender of the Dead, when restless spirits threatened the inhabitants of the Grand Necropolis, we took decisive action to protect both the living and the dead. Discovered by undead inside a Grand Necropolis tomb as an infant. Oh! Rook was raised by Mornwatch necromancers, eventually joining the Order, so I'm not Dalish? Maybe, okay, we're gonna say that I, um went on like a pilgrimage I guess to like visit some Dalish and like connect with my heritage I guess that's what we're gonna say at this point during a civil war between undead nobility what they're uh, do they have like a consciousness like not just like they're like know who they are known later as the war of the banners she led a daring attack on the rebellion's dual leaders it was a success quelling the war and saving lives but Rook's destruction of the undead nobles was controversial some warm watchers feared Rook had offended the order's aristocratic patrons and encouraged her to travel for a while Okay, let okay, quick, 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 then we continue on the team grows. When the invaders of Trevisio let me just see. Okay, I don't think this is a spoiler one. Rook was determined to free the prisoners at any cost. Pretty art. Uh, a ta talented new crow recently promoted to full membership. Rook chafed at the cautions of her commanders, especially when her city occupied by brutal soldiers known as never mind, there it is. Brutal soldiers known as the Antam. So Antiva is apparently being occupied by the Kunari, which was not a thing at the end of Inquisition, right? The, um, Ravain has always been, they, uh, it's contested, sort of. There is Kunari belief there, as well as, like, the, like, uh, traditional beliefs of, like, the shaman women. Um, those have always kind of been there. The Chantry hasn't had a super strong foothold there, um, for a long time. Um, but what is it? Saharan. Saharan has always been hotly contested. And it is close-ish to the... But, like, I... The fact that apparently Antifa has been occupied with the crows. Which, to be fair, Antifa doesn't, doesn't have a standing army, right? And that's their whole thing, is that they had the Antifa and crows who, who were the ones who, like... Their, no army wanted to go against Antifa because you would get your throat sliced in the middle of the night by an Antivan crow, right? So they were essentially, like, the the barrier, like, the first and last defense. And apparently it's not enough for the Kunari, which does not surprise me. The Kunari would not be stopped by something like that. Um, so when Rook saw a patrol herding along captives one night, she leapt into action despite saving lives. However, Rook had unknowingly compromised a larger crow operation against the Antam, which is dumb. Such a dumb... Like, I mean, like, I get it. Like, you want to help people, but, like... Ugh, that, that, that would be such a frustrating thing to have to deal with, like, as her superior. Rook's superiors were incensed. Sidelined for her actions, the young assassin searched for new ways to prove herself. Also, this one's, like, very much like, you're young, and I'm like, listen, I just turned 34, all right? Like, this seems like something that a young, up, uh, like, young buck would do, and, like, I'm just, like, it would frustrate me to, to have to deal with as a player to, like, know about it, you know what I mean? I'm like, come on, little young, young thing. Get it together, you know, but obviously, like, that's just, you know, that's just how it be, you know, is totally understandable. When a corrupt remaining noble double-crossed Rook, Rook escaped a collapsing room, turned the tables, and destroyed a dangerous artifact. As a rising lord of fortune, scared of breaking into lost tombs and ruins, Rook killed a corrupt remaining noble to prevent an ancient evil from being given to the Venatori. Oh, wow. Her actions were correct and saved the lives of expedition members, but some remaining nobles were resentful. <laughs> They're like, why didn't you let the evil into the world? Uh, because the success of the Lord's expedition relied heavily, or relied on Raveni, authorities looking the other way of the Lord's of Fortune expeditions, like their various expeditions. It seemed wise for Rick to step away a while while tempers, temple, tempers settled. I cannot talk. Uh, shadow dragons. Rook risked everything. Hang on, Adrian. Mm -hmm. Risked everything to liberate the enslaved people of Tevinter, even knowing it would anger the ruling elite. 
The family Rook was adopted into a military family and joined the Shadow Dragons to fight from the shadows for, no cha for, for change in Renrathus. While guarding a visiting di dignitary who was investigating a slavery ring in the nearby city of Nessus, Rook concluded that the mission would fail without throwing caution to the wind. Alone, she sneaked into the, di the dignitary deep into venatory controlled zones and brought him back along with the rescued slaves. Wow, that is impressive. These actions brought Rook to the Venatory's attention, and the Shadow Dragons decided to keep Rook out of sight. Vale jumpers, here we go. When lives were at stake, Rook defied orders to rescue people from the mystic perils of Arlathan. On an expedition to ruins in Arlathan Forest, the Vale jumpers found ruins that contained important lost lore and deadly danger. Barely surviving the ruins' ancient magical defenses, Rook's small team recovered an invaluable map. An invaluable map, not just a map. Leading to a hidden area of the forest, although the team escaped, other Veil Jumpers found themselves trapped. Rook chose to return to the ruins, saving her teammates' lives without losing the map. So did she bring her whole team with her? And, like, she should have, like, had somebody take the map and run. You know what I mean? If she wanted to go back. Like, apparently some of her team escaped, so, like, send the map with them. Losing the map. She was lauded for her bravery, but the map's loss caused some resentment among Veil Jumpers' leader. I think that's very valid. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, look, she's a hero. I'm like, yeah, but you just undermined everything we work for. You know what I mean? Like, again, something young and impulsive, and I'm not even that old, but I feel like I'm getting, <laughs> like I'm reading these, and I'm like, eh, <laughs> kids. <laughs> All right. Ooh, very nice art. Shield against the night when innocent lives were at stake. Rook led the charge, saving the village from monstrous nightmare, no matter the cost to herself. During a large darkspawn incursion, Rook was ordered to hold the line with other Grey Wardens until reinforcements arrived. Rook argued that by then the villagers under her attack would be dead. She disobeyed orders, leading the squad into the incursion and sealing the tunnel into the deep roads. This turned the tide, and the darkspawn were driven off, which saved the villagers. Rook's heroism was popular among the younger Wardens, but other others with connections to noble families resented her independent... Connections to noble families. There's Rook chose to set boy with Humper's cooled. Oh, hold on a second. I know we're gonna have wardens here, or we're gonna have issues with the wardens here. That was indicated at the end of Inquisition. That was in indicated all through Inquisition. There's nothing from the Anderfels. We haven't heard from the first warden at that point for like a year or more, you know. And then, like, when Hawk, technically, I'm so mad that we don't, that's one of my big things, is that Hawk has no place in this, despite Hawk either still being alive, or what I wanted was I wanted to leave my Hawk in the fade and have her, like, bounce back out and be like, hey, bitches, I'm back, you know what I mean? Like, like sunglasses on a motorcycle, like, that's what she would have done. She would have popped back out and been like, so what's up? What's going on? You know what I mean? But that's not a thing, apparently, that we get to have. And it, it tied into what, um... Flemeth said, right? She tells Hawk at the beginning of Dragon Age 2, right? Oh my gosh, what is it? What is it? It's the whole, like, you'll never know if you fly if you don't leap. You know what I mean? Something like that. And I'm butchering it completely. But, like, that was something that I held on to all through that game and all through Inquisition. That specifically for Hawk, like, she needed to make the leap. And the leap into the fade, I thought, was where they were leading with that. You know? Which, maybe that was just too far-reaching. You know what I mean? Like, it was just too, too much. Um... To, to expect that that would be tracked throughout, you know, they have a lot to do and trying to keep track of every little line of dialogue is not necessarily something that the, that the squad at Bioware can do. But I was so upset when I learned that it doesn't matter who you left behind in the fade and apparently they just, they do just die, they just die off screen, which I don't like. If, some, if somebody I care about is going to die, I want them to die on screen so I can hold them in my arms and cry about them, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah. Anyway, this is, uh, back to the like the wardens. I don't know why I went off on that tangent, but the wardens, like the issues with the wardens, where they're not supposed to be collected, connected politically to anything. Like they're not. They're supposed to be separate from all of that. And yes, we are having issues with them. But this should not be a thing that of wardens with connections to noble families. Like you're you're essentially like disinherited. I think it's not necessarily as bad as being a mage, but like. You don't, like, I don't know, I guess, you, I mean, awakening, you get to, like, you know, you become, like, the, like, the ruling Jarl? Not the Jarl, but you, the, the, whoever's in charge, the ruling leader of Am Amaranthine, but, like, that's mostly, you're not even actually in charge of Amaranthine, you just get to keep nearby, and then you help Amaranthine out, yeah. Um, and it's ex incredibly difficult to have children as a warden. So, like, your bloodline kind of ends with you, most likely, you know, barring the, like, extreme extenuating circumstances that we know about. But, um, yeah. Anyway, this is upsetting that it's so obvious, and maybe it's a hint at, like, the, um, 
sort of the corruption happening in the wardens where it's like they the whatever the nobles think should not matter it should not matter at all at all with what the wardens are doing so that is like either a misstep by the developers uh which is a small one you know it's been 10 years it's been a long time um or it's uh or it's a hint you know so anyway once again i'm taking way too long to do any of this <laughs> but so i will be picking ah uh, day it's all right it's fine it's fine <laughs> Uh, more watch. Yes, I did. There's apparently just crazy things going on in the necropolis, which is pretty wild. See, this makes sense. Offending aristocratic patrons in this situation, because Navarra, according to Cassandra, right, who's told us all about it in Inquisition, like Navarra is rife with like you know nobility. It's almost as bad as Orle, like with nobility being like. I don't know, in each other's business about, like, who's in line for the throne or whatever and, like, thinking too much of themselves. Uh, yeah, no, I'm good. I, advent, normal, what do they have, though? Underdog, incoming damage, enemy aggression, nightmare, <laughs> oh, that's so scary. Unbound. Okay, I wonder if it's, like, the trials from Inquisition. Storyteller, that, ah, they have solace in there. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that's she's the veil jumper woman. That is a really pretty card. Keeper. Adventurer. I think yeah. A balanced experience that places equal emphasis on the combat party composition and equipment choices. And I and choices over reaction time. Interesting. That's really these are like pretty in depth. These settings can be changed at any time. No, I one of the few games that I like do min maxing on is um, Dragon Age. At least in Inquisition, I would spend hours uh, crafting armor and weapons. Um, so I enjoy the like equipment choices um, aspect. At least I have in the past. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> First name Absolute Philip. What a terrible name stone it kind of actually matches the armor too like i mean it looks very dwarven like um but stone ingelvar the voices mm. Do we i'm glad to... you're here i'm glad you're here you see time to get to work <laughs> what's he been saying now well we're not in trouble I don't know who that one is, but this one... Well, we're not in trouble. Let's move. Ah, <sighs> well, we made it. This one is the woman... She's in, like, D20 and, like, Dimension 20 and stuff. I'm happy we're here. All of us. Hi. We'll be working together. Interesting. The low versus, like, medium pitch? I wonder, like, they didn't, uh, they could not have asked them to, like, revoice everything in, like, a lower pitch versus, like, a medium pitch. They probably just, like, changed it a little bit in the audio. They'd have to. That would be crazy to ask them to do everything twice. Um, I generally prefer a lower tone voice because I sometimes, I worry that higher pitched voices are going to get, like, it's like, hey, I don't, I'm not doing, I don't know how to do it, but it's like, they're going to get like, <sighs> screechy, and I just don't, don't like that. We can lend a hand. I think I kind of like. <laughs> He's always got some story. Oh, shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I think. I c Time to leave. Kind of like the Britishy voice. I think everyone's okay. Can't believe we finally have a moment alone. Oh, -ho. <laughs> I is it almost with like almost sounded Scottish for a second. I uh, in Inquisition, I preferred the British one too. I think it doesn't help that I recognize the second voice, even though I like I like her. I don't know if it quite matches her, but I prefer this voice, so I'm gonna do it. But yeah. We picked stone. I don't know if I'm going to include it, but this is in memorandum of my friend Stonesmith. So, Stonesmith, it's for you, buddy. 
<laughs> you can play a little bit of the game that you were really looking forward to through my character. So, anyway. You can customize the main character in a few events from... Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no! <laughs> we have to customize the Inquisitor! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I don't know if I was on the light. I hope I wasn't leading too far out of frame, but... Mm, I'm never gonna make this video. This video is never gonna get out. Uh, murderer, Harold, Judge, Savior. These are some of the titles heaped on the Inquisitor as she led a force that changed the nations. I love. Also, is this. Do we get our. Is this our prosthetic arm? I'm stoked. Is that made of wood? I knew it. I knew it would be made of wood, but I like the metal attachment. I really love this. I love this outfit a lot. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited! She's got such a sick arm, I was all like, oh. Eight years ago, a catastrophic bre- Oh yeah, hang on. Lineage, uh, no, uh, and an Inquisitor. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to read that yet, just in case it is- Oh, they brought the Inquisitor, like, the Inquisition stuff back! Oh, okay, yes, I was a woman. I- <laughs> Baby, oh, gall. Um, oh my gosh, I, I have a video ready to help me like figure out how to customize to make my Inquisitor in this, which I'm actually super stoked about, um, but I was curious, uh, I don't know, cancel, oh god, okay, um, I want to finalize... But I want to I want to see what the world state changes are. So I want to I want to be able to see that because I think it might change what whatever was being said at the at the summary thing. Okay, I'll see you in another. Oh my gosh, six hours. <laughs> Not it hasn't been six hours. Also, they're out here during the Inquisitor section playing Inquisition music, and they thought I wouldn't notice. They definitely knew I would notice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so good though. I have the vinyls um, for the Dragon Age soundtracks that Bioware sold, and I love them. And uh, but this track, I believe, is one. The way the way I'm picturing it is when is when you get thrown into the Fade um, with Dorian, right? And you get thrown back in time. I think it's in the castle, like when you're in the basement, but. It's in a couple different spots, I'm sure, but that's the one I'm picturing right now. But it's definitely, I heard it, and I was like, Inquisition. <laughs> so, anyway, just tugging on the heartstrings. Thanks, Bioware. This part, though, with the, uh, less of the, like, sad cello violin and more of the, like, piano, like, higher notes, that's definitely from the Emerald Graves. That's the song that just periodically plays when you're in the Emerald Graves. It's fine. It's good. It's I'm um, it's fine. <laughs> So I have been, uh, I'm dying actually is what I'm doing. Oh no. I've been devastated because I cannot get red eyes in this game apparently for some reason. As soon as we get a mod maybe. Well this is the best I can do is making like a light pink eye. <laughs> Which is just not what I wanted to go for. But I guess I'll throw up a picture maybe of my quiz or maybe I won't. Because like, I don't know, I think I did a pretty good job but like there's just... Like, and I think I somehow, I, I, I'm not going to go back on my rook and change this, but I did manage to figure out how I got this, like, super, super straight. Um, so yeah, I think she's pretty good. Um, but I'm still, like, I, the, the red eyes thing is really bothering me. I don't know why we can't do that. 
Or at least I can't figure out a way to do it. The only reddish thing in there is, um, what you call it, um, the pink, you know? I don't know. I don't know. But I have to finish this video <laughs> because I only have, I have very limited space left on my laptop <laughs> because of all the videos that I'm like uploading for it. Uh, like the this thing and the regular ones, but I think I think I did okay, and I made her uh, not not super super short, um, but she was like she was very, I kept her like the skinny model from Inquisition, but I also gave her some muscle, so that was nice. Um, Obviously the mythol tattoo, but unfortunately they only have two. They had one that like went across the nose like this, and then they had this one. So she's getting a new. Also, uh, part of my freaking <laughs> I itched my face earlier, so part of the valus lead is like messed up. But I fixed it a little bit. But anyway, um, tar, yeah, I think I finished her. I was gonna maybe look at hair really quick. I didn't find anything that jumped out at me. I wanted to give her like a long side shave, but unless I am blind, I am just not seeing like a long haired side shave, you know? Like a long pony or a long braid side shave is what I want. But looks like I am, I am not seeing that. And this is fine. I love the braid look. It's just I wish it was wish it was a little bit of a side shave also. But her profile especially, I don't I feel like I did a pretty good job with what I had. But Okay, some changes. Continue finalize. Her name is Erica. Erica. How do we I won't let this yeah. stand. We need to move. Yeah, it's the first one. It can't, it can't have this. this. I'm going to cry. Oh my gosh. Erica Lavellan. I accept. Um, do we... Wait. Well, you can't go back on the rest. I mean, her background, what? Like, her lineage like her the fact that she's an elf because I there's nothing else to change yeah I, this is and then customize world state continue okay I was I was like where's the stuff at okay we did romance solas he possessed knowledge beyond any mortal, yet even the dread wolf could not foresee what it would mean to fall in love. I'm going to sob. I keep looking over here, and I should not. Though Solas hid his past from the Inquisitor, this is also bothering my ears a little bit, <laughs> the more precious that time became. Their connection was passionate and undeniable. Solas mourned that his duty to the past forced him to leave her in the end. But the Inquisitor knew they had, knew what they had might not be so quick to fade. Quick to fade? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes. And we disbanded the Inquisition. We did not give it to the Chantry. The Inquisitor made a red decision to give up the power before it was corrupted any further. I think Solus even asks you about that in one of the cutscenes. Like, what will you do with this power? Or, like, what do you what do you see to do in the future, you know? And, uh... I never actually finished my, like, canon canon run. Where I, like, went through... Like, I wanted 100% the whole game. Um... Like, get everything on one run, right? Like, I've 100 percent of the game, but I just... I wanted to get the... It all in one run and not, like, spread out. And so, uh... I don't know if that makes sense. But in one game. And I did not do that! <laughs> but... It's alas. Uh, she saw that the Inquisition had grown so large it had become easy for others to misuse the many resources at its disposal. The Inquisitor disbanded it all and let her people choose new paths of their own. Oh, okay, is that, what, is that what it is? All the people who were invested are just like, oh, yep, see you later. I guess we'll hope that somebody can take care of Solus. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. I mean, just making sure everything's working. 
Um, when Solus told the Inquisitor he intended to merge the physical, it's probably this one because I remember this one from the epilogue. He intended to merge the physical world and the fate. He admitted this world would cause this would cause death and destruction. Despite insisting there was no other way, Solus did not relish the cost in lives. S vowed to stop Solus, we vowed to save Solus from himself. See, and it's like you see him in the fate, and he's watching you in the fate. Like you see each other in dreams, and it's like oh my gosh. Solus, yeah, he, the Inquisitor refused to give up on him. The Inquisitor believed she saw genuine regret in Solus and that he didn't truly want to go through this plan. She vowed to save her friend from dooming both the world and himself. The Inquisitor's influence has had diminished, but she still had contacts who began searching for the Dread Wolf. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's so good. This is going to be so... I'm hoping, anyway. I hope, right? I hope this plays out the way I want it to. Yes. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, apparently, with the, uh, hang on, let's see. Okay, here we go. Okay, I wasn't sure if this would change, but I don't think so. Eight years ago, a catastrophic breach in the Fey realm of magic and dreams threatened the world. Those through circumstance, or some claim fate, a woman rose to lead an organization known as the Inquisition. Traveling many lands, rallying people to her cause, the Inquisitor closed the breach and stopped the villain behind it. She was advised throughout by an elven mage named Solus. The Inquisitor discovered, however, that Solus was in truth an ancient elven god. Oh, uh, you know, just Inquisitor things. Found Harald, the dread wolf. He planned to restore things to their primal state. Uh, when the fate and physical reality were one, Solus said he regretted the deaths this would cause, but claimed there was no other way to fix what was, to his eyes, an irredeemably broken world. After that, the Dreadwolf vanished, but the Inquisitor swore to find him. Uh, <laughs> oh, the tragedy is, like, it's so good, I eat it, I'm eating it up. Um... Stone in your ear. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. All right, here we go. Okay, so we are Stone Ingovar. We are lineage elf, woman she, her, class warrior from the Morn Watch. Okay, are we, do we have room, computer, to, to do this? All right, finalize everything. I think. Are you sure? We can't change our appearance later in the game. That is nice. Thank you for giving us that from the outset. I appreciate that. Okay. Do I have to play the story? <laughs> I was hoping to save right there, but I didn't, I didn't see how to do that. Apparently, you're supposed to be able to save mid-customization? I don't know. Are we actually going to get the beginning of the game? This is wild. I've been playing for like four hours. No video outro this time around because it's 1 a.m. and I took all my Valseline off hours ago. <laughs> so, but I do want to give a quick thank you to everybody for watching. And this is a longer one, but it managed just to jam everything in. Um, I guess a real quick update. I tried to play the next bit, uh, and I got I could hear Varric's voice and I could see periodic splashes of the game but i got to like the first part where you can do a dialogue option which is within like 60 seconds of the game starting and it was just like a powerpoint so i stopped like i just did a hard like reset of the game right or not reset just like a hard close you know because it had auto saved after doing the character creator and i went back in and it was still that save file was still there so thank goodness um but what i did actually do is i had to uninstall the game and reinstall it because i have two hard drives i have an h h uh, hd hard drive <laughs> i don't know how you say it off the top of my head right now because my brain is melting uh and i have an, a solid state drive an ssd uh it turns out velgar downloaded on the hd drive and not the solid state drive so in order for me to play on ultra i had to re-download it onto the ultra or onto the <laughs> solid state drive so that's what i did um so i have not when, when we load back in it will throw me right into the beginning of the cutscene, which is how my friend experienced it too because her game actually crashed so that's what i'm thinking is going to happen um but yeah just wanted to give you guys a quick update on that um 
besides that, I want to say thank you again for watching, and I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much to all of you, and especially thank you to uh, Thane, Fane, Thane, ha, huh? Fane, my Acorn tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Reese Galito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. I very much appreciate it as well, and I love seeing you pop in occasionally in the comments. It's super fun. Um, I think you said hi face on that last one, which was funny because of the way I said it in the description, but yes. Um, and I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my forest tier patron who has truly gone above and beyond his support in me, of me and the channel. And I really cannot thank him enough. So thank you again, Christopher, and thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.